So you've got four points representing two line segments and you want to find when they intersect. That's the purpose of this video. It's worth remembering that all of these points are actually vectors from our origin. So C has an X component and a Y component and D also has an X component and a Y component. So in reality C is this vector here, D is this vector here, and this purple line we can call that CD. We can give it a direction and call it CD. To calculate CD we can say that it's equal to D subtract C. If I take C and I add CD like so, we're going to get to D. So I can draw that out if we go from 0 to C and we add the vector CD, we end up at D. There we go. Now what's nice about this representation, we don't want to get to D, we want to get to some other point along the line. So let's put in a variable, a scalar, which we'll call T2 actually. And now, where do we get to along the line? Well, it really depends on the value of T2. If T2 was zero, uh, then we would end up at C, right? Uh, if T2 were one, well, then it's just the same equation as before, so we would end up as D. But we can even do T2 is equal to two, for instance. And then we would end up in some point, double the length of the line over here. This is called a parametric representation of that line. If I go a plus ab uh, multiplied by another scalar, a separate one called t1, uh, when this equation is satisfied then we found our intersection point p. Okay so the first step is to do some rearranging. I'm going to switch over to white. Uh, let's go c uh, the first thing I'm going to do is say that uh, C minus A is equal to AC and that's this vector here from A to C. Now we have a bit of a problem because we have a vector, a vector, a scalar, a vector and another scalar. T1 and T2 can actually be grouped into a column vector and A, B, and C, D can be grouped together into a matrix to get the same equation. And there needs to be a little negative sign here on the T2 so that we end up with the correct sign uh, from up here. Now let's go back to calling this A, C. Let's call this matrix here M and let's call this vector here just T. You invert uh, M, so it'll be M to the negative 1, AC is equal to T. To find the inverse of M, uh, is cross product M inverted. So just an aside that the cross product in two dimensions, we will define it to be uh, X1 uh, times y2 minus y1 times x2 for two column vectors like that. Alrighty, so uh, let's let's do this. Uh, so we'll put AC here and T2. So if we actually multiply this out, and we forgot the negative fixed. Uh, these are actually also a cross product if you look carefully. So here is our final formula. Forgot the negative again. So we've pretty much done it. All we have to do is take uh, either one of these, say T2, and substitute it up into here and we'll find that that is equal to P. The only way this won't work is if this cross product here, AB cross product CD, is equal to zero, which happens whenever the original two lines are uh, parallel or collinear. In that case, this approach won't get you a solution and you'll have to try something else uh, because you can't divide by zero. Basically, you have to do this one divided by AB cross
cross product CD and that's not going to work. So if you'd like to see an actual implementation of this, I have a REPL that I have been working on and uh, it's basically a library for offsetting lines and other tools but if you go into the line tools package and you look at line tools.py up the top is solve intersection uh, there's basically the whole process that i just went through uh, written out in comments here uh, but you can see at the end the solution is very very simple it's just a bunch of cross products divided by each other and uh, you get the result and and I'm using it you see the the red lines being offset using that very algorithm so I will put the link in the doodly do thank you very much for watching and you have a good day